listen it didn't hit y'all like it hit me because y'all maybe never had nobody come in your face and tell you what you wasn't going to be or what you wouldn't obtain or what God wouldn't do in your life. And yeah, I may be disadvantaged. I may not have all that you got. But it's one thing that I have. And that is a fellowship and a cornelia with the Father. And he don't call a qualified. But he qualified those who he called. And I need somebody in this church that has a past. That has a record. That has a mark on your name. That needs a character witness. And I'm so glad when I came find nobody uh, to be my character witness on earth. Uh, I got somebody uh, sitting at the right hand of God uh, that when he becomes my character witness, uh, he say justify. 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 Let's preach, amen. 1988, in the islands of Jamaica, there was a group of young men that had a desire to become Olympic, an Olympic bobsledding team. They lived in Jamaica. Like it never rains in Southern California it never snows in the islands of Jamaica. But get rain and sun, humidity, no ice, no snow, no sleet. But there was a desire and a few young Jamaican men to have and represent their country, their island in the Olympics with the bobsledding team. Make that make sense. And you live in Antarctica, uh, Canada, even even America. There's parts of America that's icy and snow year round. Those are the parts I don't visit. Hello, somebody. But know this: they had a disadvantage. Because they could not qualify, they didn't have proper utensils. It wasn't a bobsled nowhere in Jamaica because it wasn't needed there. I'm going somewhere if y'all ride with me. Y'all come in the sled with me. Come on in there with me. They were practicing in dirt and dust and heels. They had a disadvantage because the bobsledding team that they were going to be competing against, they're actually practicing in ice. They're, they're practicing in the climate and in the, the temperature in which they're going to be performing in. But despite the disadvantage that there's never been a bobsledding team in Jamaica, despite the fact that they didn't have a coach for ample training there in Jamaica, despite all of the disadvantages, because of their heart, because of their determination, because they weren't going to give up, because they were not going to stop, they were qualified to compete in the Olympics. Sad thing is, is that they got up there, crashed, and was an extra last place. Hello, <laughs> somebody. I thought they won in the movie, but I guess I went to sleep on that part. <clears throat> I did my research digging out Hawking. I found out they crashed out and they had to walk the end. Didn't place. But they were qualified. <laughs> I'm trying to encourage somebody here today that is trying to climb a ladder and trying to be number one. But you ought to be glad that even in the mix of all of the millions that you're qualified to even be in the competition. Hello, somebody. In this text, 
and I'm halfway finished with my sermon, we find Samuel being a priest and judge to Israel having a problem with his emotions. The first verse of chapter 16, the Lord is saying to Samuel, how long are you going to mourn Saul? Seeing that I rejected him. Realizing and understanding that God had bigger and better plans for Israel. That didn't include Saul. But Samuel being the man that he was and it hurt his heart to know that there was such a wicked ruler of God's chosen people that it grieved his heart that God had rejected him and he was praying to God that God would let a man, a, a, a cell back in. But can I tell you church, I don't care how hard you pray, you cannot pray blessings on somebody that God has rejected. We need, I'm preaching right here and I'm going to help somebody if you want to be helped. We need to stop trying to do CPR at the funeral. Somebody slow, but somebody caught it. We need to stop doing CPR at the funeral. By the time you got to the funeral, they been dead. Hello, somebody. In the freezer, embalmed, uh, ain't nothing left to do but say earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. Uh, and some of us are wasting our time uh, at the funeral making compression yeah. on relationships that God said was dead, uh, on relationships and marriages and businesses and people uh, that God said are dead, and you stand it. That in it is you ways to try to resuscitate what God has already expired. You could be putting that energy in building and fertilizing the ground that will produce a fruit in your life. In other words, you got to know when to hold them. You got to know when to fold them. You got to know when to walk away. And if you from jumping, you better know when to run. Where y'all be at? I know y'all here. Y'all don't be shamed now. Get loud. Amen. Samuel was mourning Saul. That's because Samuel was a man of order. And although you may mean the best, you may want the best, but sometimes God is placing you in a position to move forward and allowing him to write your story and not you be your own self author. We need to take those publishing rights off of our life and allow God who is the author and the perfecter of our faith to write our story. He puts the characters in. Y'all not going to hear me here. He removes the character. He puts the high moments. He writes the low moments. God! We've got to trust God and let God be God. And it's more than an ocean. Anyway, I don't want to stay there too long. Can you? I don't want to. Samuel say, well, God, you didn't reject us all. Now what now? Say, hey, go on over yonder, back to Saul. Go down, tell him have a consecration and it's a man named Jesse that got some boys hey Jesse Eden. got some boys Jesse got the one Jesse got the king in fact of the matter this is a little preaching for people that like preaching and just not high pipe it wasn't even necessary that God's original plan for them to have king anyway they wanted a king and God gave him a king. That's when they got Saul and Saul was crazy and thrown off. Let me tell you something. When you allow God to write your story, you, you don't know what's best for you. Except the fact that you got a lane and God got a lane. 
And your job is to stay in your lane and allow God to maneuver and navigate you through life. But God being the God that he is, and you can testify, he'll give you what you want. <laughs> Am I right about it? Oh, God, I want her. I want her. I ain't watch I'm going to step in. I, I want her. Got to have her. Oh, she's a dime. She's top of the line. Cute face. I want her. <laughs> God gave some of us his permissive will. What is his permissive will? Because you're his child, because he loves you, he'll permit it to happen in your life. He'll permit you to get some stuff that you really don't need, but because he loves you, he'll let you have it. And then one day you'll find out this is what I wanted, God. This is what not what you planned for me. And then you'll be trying to get a refund. And some of them stuff you can't get a refund on. Hello, somebody. You can't return. You just got to deal with the life. I need somebody that can be real that I'm learning how to deal with some of the life decisions I made on my own. But knowing that God's grace is even sufficient for me uh, in the midst of what I did. Because as much as you want to, amen, you ain't the only one that want a refund. Paul wanted a refund. You got this thorn in my flesh. I don't want it. Take it away. Jesus ain't now cause it's you. And, uh, but guess what you're going to find out? Uh, that my grace uh, is sufficient for you uh, with the thorn. Uh, so what are you saying, Sally? Uh, God may not remove the thorn, uh, but God will give you grace to deal with the thorn. That wasn't plain enough. Uh, let me break it down. Uh, God may not change the situation, but he can change you to deal with the situation. Was that good? Uh, and we've got to have enough spiritual sense uh, and identification qualifications uh, to know when God uh, is just molding us uh, and shaping us uh, for a powerful testimony. Your spouse may not be doing right right now, but that don't mean you go to the courthouse. You come back to the church house and you lay that joke on the altar. I say you lay it on the altar. And allow God may not ever change him. God may not ever change her. But God will change you to be able to handle her and live with him or her. And still keep your dignity. Still have your pride. Still have joy. Still have happiness. And still go on through life. Oh, this is getting good. I feel like I'm going somewhere. Listen, look up here at me. I'm going to make you self-entitled people mad. And I don't care. You are responsible for your own happiness. Oh, I don't got enough habit, people. Oh, are we all sad in here? You are responsible for your own happiness. It's not your spouse's job to make you happy. <laughs> it's not your job uh, responsibility to make you happy uh, if you got Jesus in your life uh, you got something that's beyond happiness uh, you've got joy uh, that's unspeakable uh, and it's full of glory uh, so in spite of what I'm going through uh, my happiness is not predicated on what's happening my happiness is predicated on who I have inside of me and y'all just be giving y'all happiness away. The devil is a lie. Yeah. I'll be happy in the mud. Yeah. And let me tell you something. I'm not talking about Sister Sally. But when somebody mad and you happy, that make them matter. Hello, somebody. And one day or another, that joy jump off on them. Hello, somebody. And I told you, I'm not talking about this. Y'all quit looking at her a little bit. But I'm not talking about her most of him. Because there's an enemy. There's an adversary that has no reason but to 
torment you uh, and make you turn your face away from God. Uh, but you ought to be able in the mix uh, of all your adversity, uh, say for God I live uh, and for God I'll die. Uh, I'm not going to be shaken uh, by what I'm experiencing right now. Because I'm confident that the suffering of this present time is not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed. Back to this text. Samuel had that. They asked for a king. Samuel asked God to give him a king. He anointed Saul. And now God say, Saul's time is up. It's time to move on. Go over there with Jesse. Go over there with Jesse. Go with Jesse and his boys. And the boys is over there. So they got ready to consecrate it. And that's the back end of that. Because Samuel already knew Saul was upset and he was kind of nervous to go. But he said, you tell him I sent you. Hello, somebody. And when you go under the leadership and direction of the most high God, you can walk confidently in whatever you're seeking and asking God for. Am I going to witness him? Yeah. Know this. Went over there. Brought his boys over there. Big old tall boys that's been training. Watch it, uh, Deacon James Allen. That's been training for this they warrior. They cut. And they all, I forgot to tell you that God had told uh, Sam, which is a part of the anointing of king process, that they would have that horn full of oil. And then whenever the king would be there, the oil would just flow. The oil would flow. It wasn't a forcible thing. It was the anointing and the power of God that signified that this is the one of the king. He went through seven of his boys. Didn't even look at David. See, <laughs> it was a few reasons why David had a disadvantage in the qualification of being the next king of Israel. For one, he didn't have no kind of battle, combative experience. <laughs> Help me preach. But the thing about it is just that. All he did was tend the sheep and in the fields. They say he ain't got up to this big boy stuff yet. Hello, somebody. He doing little kid stuff. He ain't ready. Hallelujah. I'm about to get happy. Because I heard somebody tell Reverend Sally he wasn't ready. And you heard somebody tell you you wasn't ready. <laughs> But you walked up just like you did in that high school pet rally. We ready. We ready. Hey, 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 hey. We ready. Hey. For God. For God. For God. Y'all too worldly. Oh, Lord. They done went to the South Oak Cliff and Lincoln High School pet rally. When they said you couldn't, there was something inside of you that said you could. Let me hit fast forward. More of the story is, seven other boys looked apart, had the shape, had the physique, had the qualifications upon man's measurement. But God was looking past beyond what men could see. Let me tell you something. Don't be men in your life and disqualify yourself for what God has already pre-qualified you for. I said something, but I may have said it too fast. Don't be men and disqualify yourself based upon what you see when God has already pre-qualified you for what he's taken you to. Okay, thank you. Somebody, anybody receive that today? You looking at all of your insufficiencies and saying you will never. Don't you be like man. You be like God. And don't look at the idol, but look at the heart. You know in your heart that you are a multi-millionaire. You know in your heart that God is destined you to have multiple streams of income. I'm trying to talk to some Holy Ghost entrepreneurs in this house. That's tired from living from paycheck to paycheck. No, you may not have the degree, but you got the oil. You may not have the permit uh, or the certificate uh, but you got the oil uh, you may not have the work experience uh, but you got the oil uh, is there anybody here <laughs> the 
that's going to speak to that president, that CEO, that minister, that pastor, that deacon in your heart. And stop disqualifying yourself because of what men see. God sees your heart. In David's heart, he was a king. Uh, <laughs> in his heart, he was a king. And while he was tending to those sheep, what they didn't know, what they didn't know is that God was giving him OTJ on the job training. Because as he was tending and leading his sheep, God was going to use David to lead his fever. Have I got a witness here? And so let me get back to the text. After the oil didn't flow on the seven boys of Jesse, Samuel said, do you have another one? He say, after tending to the sheep, he say, go get them. And when he put that horn over little David's head, the oil began to flow. And the spirit of the Lord affirmed and confirmed that this is a the next king of Israel. Is there anybody here that thank God that you might have some disadvantages and you might have some shortcomings but when you work for the Lord and the anointing is on your life, the anointing will open doors that no man could shut. The anointing destroys uh, the yoke uh, of bondage. Uh, is there anybody here uh, that may end up in your mind? Uh, I may not be qualified, uh, but I'm anointed uh, because I allow Jesus uh, to be the Lord of my life. Uh, and so uh, I got to tell you the back end uh, of the story. Uh, as David was anointed the king, uh, God sent him over to Saul's house because Saul was vexed with the evil spirit. But, 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 but David had the anointing and as he played that harbor for old King Saul, the evil spirit moved out of him. And what are you saying, Sally? When you allow the anointing of the Lord to flow out of your life, the Lord will change the heart of the naysayers in your life and the same folks that said you wouldn't it's going to be right there at the table when you was is there anybody here know that the Lord will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies that when all that happened with the freshly anointed David he played the devil out of Saul and then come the next day there was a great giant that was trying to kill everybody he can kill and they didn't have nobody that could stand up to fight that giant but 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 uh, little old David uh, who was anointed by God uh, to be a giant slayer he said I can go uh, I may not have uh, the armor physically uh, but I have uh, the full armor of God uh, and I may not come uh, but to you in the name uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, and just like uh, the Lord uh, delivered the bear into my head uh, the same God uh, that delivered uh, the lion uh, in my head uh, surely 
Y'all know that's my word. Help me say, surely the same God that I killed the bear with, the same God that I killed the lion with, is gonna give me the power to kill you. I know that you're taller than me. I know that you're stronger than me. I know you've got more experience than me. But it's one thing I do know: you don't have more anointing than me. How? I need some anointed folks uh, that's anointed uh, and not a shame. Uh, David uh, went on the battlefield, uh, left his knife, uh, didn't have no armor. Uh, all he had uh, was the anointing. Uh, and let me tell uh, somebody here, uh, all you need uh, is the anointing. Uh, don't you wear it about what they say. Don't you worry about what they do because the anointing is what makes the difference. The letter kill it, but the anointing bring the life. I said the letter kill it, but the anointing brings the life. David went with the anointing of the Lord and he killed that giant and somebody here need to show up uh, in the anointed uh, and kill that giant uh, kill that giant uh, of depression uh, kill that giant uh, of negativity uh, kill that giant uh, of evil workers uh, yeah I may be uh, disadvantaged uh, but I sure ain't uh, disqualified uh, whoever uh, Counted you out, uh, can't count, uh, and the reason why uh, you've been counted in, uh, cause one Friday uh, he died. He died. Uh, 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 then he died. Uh, Put him down in a fire tube. Stay there. Oh, they find him. Stay there. Oh, they said it. Stay there. Saturday night. Early. 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 Sunday morning. He got him. Power to destroy the yoke. Power for the walls to fall down. Power for giants to be slain. Say it. Praise him now, knowing that God used so many people in his word that was not qualified. Kermit Paul, his name was Saul too, killing John, killing Christians, persecuting them. But God used them to kill the devil. And I want you to know. You're here today. You're here today. You oppress because of that mountain. The town was above you. But I want you to know, God did not call you because you were qualified. He called you because he anointed you. And through the power of the sacrifice of the cross, you're going to make it. You might as well praise him. You might as well praise him. It's already done. I said it's already done. Y'all not acting like it's already done. <laughs> I need you to envision the head of the giant before you. It's already done. The same thing that was overshadowing you. Now you have dominion over. It's all. Oh, already done. As we go 
before. I want you to know you are not defined by your disadvantages. You're not defined by what you're experiencing and what you can't do. But you're defined because of Philippians 4 and 13. It says you can do all things through Christ that gives you strength. It gives you power. Lift your hands in this sanctuary. Hallelujah.